Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our time of prayer. Prayer is so important at any time, but we feel especially during this time of COVID-19 and the isolation that we are having, the fear that is all around. It's important for us to come before the throne of grace on a continuous basis. Uh, the Bible says that we are to pray without ceasing. And we've been working our way through the Lord's Prayer. Last week, we looked at, give us this day our daily bread. And tonight we are looking at the phrase that says, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, something we don't always realize that what we are saying in this portion is, God, I am giving you permission to forgive me the same way that I forgive others. And so if I don't forgive other people, I'm not expecting you to forgive me. Did you see it in the prayer? It says, forgive us as we or in the same way that we forgive others. So forgiveness is at the basis of our salvation for Jesus died for our sins so that we could be forgiven, that we could be cleansed. He told a story, a parable in Matthew chapter 18. It was a story about a man who owed the king billions of dollars and there was no way that he would ever be able to repay this debt. And so he goes to the king and he falls down in front of him. He says, oh, please be patient with me and I will, I will pay you all. Well, the king was moved with compassion and he forgave this man the debt. He didn't have to pay it anymore. And so the man walked out of the king's presence free. And on his way home, he happened to meet uh, another man who act actually owed him just a few dollars. And so he grabbed him by the throat. He says, pay me what you owe me. And the man says, well, please be patient with me and I will pay you everything. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly what the first man had said to the king. But instead of forgiving him, he threw him into prison until everything he owed was paid back. Well, word gets back to the king. And he calls the first man in and he says, Oh, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt. Should you not have also forgiven this other man? And then the scripture says, And he turned him over to the torturers until he should pay everything that he owed. But the last verse of chapter 18 says, So shall your heavenly Father do also to you, if you from your heart do not forgive others their trespasses. That's just how important it is. And every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we are saying, God, I understand how important forgiveness is, so I'm asking you to forgive me the same way that I forgive others. So there is no debt that is great enough for us to hold on to. The debt we owed to God in sin was like that billions of dollars. And the sins that other people do against us, that's like the few dollars. It's not that much. And so God is saying, if I can forgive all that you've done, then you also should forgive. Well, tonight we are going to, again, go before the Lord in prayer. And, and some of the things that we have prayed before we pray every week because they're still ongoing. But we want to start with the Lord's Prayer. Pray with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Lord, we thank you that you listen to the prayers of your people. Your ears are attentive to hear their cries. And Lord, we pray for your people throughout the world, no matter where they might be, in what situation they find themselves. We pray for those that are here in St. Catharines, 
the many different churches that used to meet on a Sunday. And Lord, for those who are part of our Scott Street MB family, we pray for all these people. And Lord, we want to offer up prayer this evening for some of our folk who are mourning and grieving yet again the loss of a loved one. And Father, we pray for the family of dear Anna Marie Berriman, who passed away earlier this week at the age of 101. In another couple months, she would have reached the the ripe age of 102. But Lord, she was a woman who loved you, who loved people, who spent her years helping others. And I pray that as she's laid to rest tomorrow, that her memory would be blessed. And Lord, we also pray for others who are facing ongoing health concerns. I know many of them are suffering with things on a daily basis, whether it be illness, whether it be disease, whether it be a a handicap or an impediment they have. Lord, it's something that they are working with every day. And I know it can be draining. I know it can be frustrating at times. And I pray that you would reach down your hand of mercy and you would touch them and they would feel the presence of Almighty God. And Lord, I want to pray for also for those who are lonely during this time of isolation, for those who are suffering depression and anxiety. It's a difficult thing not to be able to interact with people the way that we used to. It's a difficult thing to have to stay isolated, to line up at the grocery stores, to wear masks and But Lord, we realize there's a purpose for all of this. And we are doing our best. We're doing our due diligence so that we might not come in contact with this disease. And Lord, we thank you. But we do pray for those who have been lonely. And we thank you that some of the places are now beginning to open up so that some visitors are able to come and cheer. And we thank you that There is a lessening of the outbreaks of COVID-19 here in Ontario. But with that in mind, we are still warned on all fronts that there may be a second wave of it come around. We certainly hope not, but Lord, you're the only one who knows. So please continue to keep your children safe and secure in a world that is full of turmoil. And we pray, Lord, for those who are the most vulnerable during this time of the Corona COVID-19 crisis. That's our elderly and those with ongoing respiratory illness. Lord, we thank you that many of our senior residences, as we said, are now beginning to open. But we pray that you would continue to keep our dear seniors safe from this terrible, terrible virus. And honey, why don't you pray for our children at this time of the year, especially as they're you know, finishing school and that, okay. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we lift up our children and our youth to you, Lord, as their lives have changed as well, Lord. Many of them have graduated from public school, high school, college, universities, but are not able to celebrate their achievements with the graduation ceremony, Lord. We just... Help them to realize what they did accomplish is so important, Father, and we are proud of them, Lord. Lord, we pray for the parents who've had to readjust their schedules to accommodate children at home, and for those whose jobs are at risk during this time, Lord. Father, give them the patience to deal with their children, Lord, and just and insight in what to tell them what's going on in this world, for life is so different for each one of us. We'd also like to pray for our reopening team, Lord, as they get together to discuss how we can open Scott Street Church, Father. Lord, there's new protocols to adhere to. There's changes that will be made as we get together as a congregation. There's learnings for All of us, Lord, as services will be different, Father. But Lord, at one point we will be together, worshiping you in the house of the Lord. And we thank you for when that time comes, Father. Yes. And just pray for your patience until that time has arrived. For we want to do it in a safe manner, Lord. So give the team 
the knowledge of what to do to take care of us, Lord. We'd also like to hold up our elders and our staff, members at Scott Street, Father, for they are very valued and unique, and they all have gifts, Lord, for each of us that you have bestowed on them. We ask that you guide them in whatever they need to do, Lord. Send your spirit among them to work through them. And just be with them each day, Lord, for each day brings its own challenges, Lord. Mm. And Father, we want to pray for those who are in authority over us, whether it be the federal government, the provincial government, or the local government. And we thank you for the leaders that you have put in place. And Lord, we ask that you would give them wisdom. We ask that you would give them understanding as to the proper steps to take. Lord, we pray for them constantly, and your word tells us that we are to pray for those who are in authority over us, that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life. And Lord, that is something that we desire very greatly. And so we pray that, as Scripture says, that the heart of the King is in the hand of the Lord. So we pray that their hearts would be directed by you. We pray that the insights they have would come from you, and that it would be for the good of the whole country. And Lord, we also pray that you would use the loneliness, you would use the isolation, you would use the fear, you would use the anxiety to cause people to turn their eyes to you and that they would be saved. Lord, that is the whole desire of life here on earth, that men would be saved. It is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And Lord, we pray that you would speak to people's hearts, that you would speak to them in various ways, and that you would convict them of their sin, that they would turn their lives over to you. They would trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, there are many things out there that it's calling for their attention. But the most important thing is to be right with God. And we pray for them, whether they are part of our family or people we've never met. Lord, that souls would be saved. And Lord, we want to commend each one into your hands. Whether it be our families, our neighbors, our friends, all the people of the city. And by your spirit, enable us to live in love for you and for one another. And help us to lay aside our own concerns. Lord, help us to focus our, our attention and our care upon all who are most vulnerable and isolated among us. And may we pursue good for those who are the most anxious, fearful, the sick, and the lonely. And Lord, I want to thank you for the way that our Scott Street family is working together as we are facing this difficult time. And help us to emerge even stronger than we first went into isolation. Oh, Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. You know, hon, there's some things that we seem to pray for each week as well. And that's because they're ongoing needs. And we want to keep them in our hearts. We want to keep them in our prayers. So join us as once again, we pray. We have got a number of, of things that we want to pray for. And so pray with us tonight as we remember each and every one of these specialized needs. And so, Lord, we pray for those who care for us in so many different ways. Lord, for the shopkeepers. And many of them are facing uncertainty as so long they have been without letting people in. And now some of the regulations are relaxed, and but some of them have already gone out of business. So we pray for our shopkeepers. We pray for our civil servants who are tirelessly working to keep all of our systems up and running. And Lord, tonight I want to offer a special prayer for our police. Lord, they are under such attack this days. 
And so many of them are good and reputable and working tirelessly because they love people. And they're bearing the brunt of just a few. So Lord, I pray that you would protect them. Lord, that those who are in it for their own gain would be weeded out. But you would honor those who are keepers of the peace and you would bless them. We pray for those who are working in shelters and looking after people who have no homes. I pray that you would keep them well and keep them safe. And we thank you that you're able to do this. And Lord, we thank you for every farm that is up and operating. We pray for every farm that is producing food, for every farm that is producing produce, for every farm that's producing meat, Lord, that's so that we can live. And as the the sign says, did you eat today? Then thank a farmer. And we do. And we pray for all of those that work on the farms as well, that you would keep them safe. And Lord, we pray for every one of our foreign workers who have come in to help take care of the crops. Lord, some of them have been infected with COVID-19, but many, many more of them are being protected already by the farmers that brought them in. And they're doing their best to make sure that they are safe. Lord, I pray that you would bless them and watch over them and their families back home as well as they come to work in this area. Lord, I bring before you the janitors and caretakers and cleaning crews, Lord. Father, we think of Paul Mason at our own church, Lord, as he does a job of cleaning our facility, Lord, and taking care of it. But I also think of the uh, the caretakers and those that are cleaning the storefronts, Lord, giving them an extra wipe down of pin pads or wherever it may be, buggies, Lord. We think of uh, the people taking extra time from their busy schedule, Lord, to take care of their facility for us as we go shopping. Lord, we think of the uh, pharmacists, Lord, that have been there since COVID started and are administering our prescriptions, answering our health questions, Lord, and we just are appreciative appreciative of them and the job they do. We think of the veterinarians and the groomers for our pets, Lord, that uh, they can once be again be taken care of, Lord, and just uh, give them a special thought and appreciation for the jobs that they, they do for us, Lord. We think of those working in the food industry, Lord, that be it from the transportation needs to bring the food into our stores to the farmers who bring it to the markets, Lord, and just um, supply our daily needs with the grocery stores, Father, and that there is abundance of food there, Lord. We're not short. We're not starving. Lord, we have plenty. So, Lord, we thank you for those workers. We just ask that You be with the cashiers, Lord, who deal with a variety of people each day. And, Lord, we can be that one person that says thank you to them for coming into the job. We can be that person who gives a smile or lets someone in a line, Lord, that just makes someone else's day, Lord, for their days are not easy, Lord. We just ask that you give us an amount of grace that we can pass on to them an appreciation, a thank you. We thank you for them, Lord. So, Father, all of these we lay before you. And we thank you that you're a God that hears and answers prayer. Lord, we've heard for many years that prayer changes things, and we believe it. So we thank you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you will do. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. And as our theme has been, forgive us as we forgive others, that you would examine your life and see if there's someone that maybe you could just reach out and forgive so that our Father also could bestow his blessings on us as well. 
Well, thank you for being with us this evening. And from our home to yours, thank you for letting us into your home and into your hearts. May God bless you. Good night.